All right. Again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Thank you all so much for coming over now. Bands that suffered terrible accidents while on tour. You know, I think what's crazy is. Think about all the stuff we don't know about, you know, I feel like a lot of stuff that does come to surface, maybe a little sugar coated, but think about all the stuff. I think that's why when people do kind of like a, a book or tell all book, they, 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 those books do so well because people want to know everything that went on. Now with this title, I'm not talking about like the actual title itself. I'm just talking about like, as far as like, cause I'm watching that Wu Tang show on Hulu and the stuff they be showing when they be going on tour, you know, I mean, it's, it's a show. So it's kind of simmered down or whatever, but we're going to check this out again. Make sure you guys are subscribed or check out the grunge channel. Shout out to all the good humans out there. Link is always in the description for those who are asking. So we ain't going to waste no more time. Let's jump right into it. What do 50s rock legends, a contemporary indie duo, and a 90s pop phenomenon have in common? We lost them in eerily similar ways. Otis Eerily. Redding, the 26-year-old well driller turned megastar, died not long after unseating Elvis Presley as the Melody Maker's top male vocalist. He was Man. seeing the fruits of his labors, too. The tour that he died on was the first tour where he was using his own newly purchased private plane. Oh. Redding and his backing group, the Barkays, were only four miles from their destination, Dang. the Madison Municipal Airport in Madison, Wisconsin, when the plane crashed into a nearby lake. The area was covered with fog, and days later, rescue divers were still dredging the lake, trying to recover any possible survivors of the crash. There was one survivor, Ben Cauley. A seat cushion saved his life, and he, along with fellow Barkay member James Alexander, who was on another plane, rebuilt the group and later toured with Isaac Hayes, Aretha Franklin, and the Doobie Brothers. Dang, Any accident man. like this is terrible, but the deaths of the Barkays were particularly heartbreaking as they were still in high school. In fact, according to Billboard, some were so young they needed permission slips from their parents to miss school and go on the tour. Now that is extremely sad. These brothers were still in high school. Needed permission slips. Oh. According to Billboard, some were so young they needed permission slips from their parents to miss school and go on the tour. There's a footnote here, too. CL Tampa Bay says the accident came just three days after Redding recorded what would be one of his most iconic songs, Sitting on the Dock of the Bay. As it oh. turns out, some details of the famous recording were actually released unfinished. The whistling at the end of that song? Well, that was because he always intended to go back in and add more lyrics after that trip to Cleveland, never getting the chance. Dang. In the late 1950s, Eddie Cochran's bouncy guitar and raspy vocals helped write the blueprint for thought, the first wave of rock and roll. While still Elvis. in his teens, Cochran repeatedly hit the upper reaches of the pop chart with his songs about partying and youthful frustration, particularly Summertime Blues and Come On Everybody. According to history, Cochran's rougher-edged rock and roll remained popular in the UK in the 1960s, after softer pop had supplanted the genre on the US charts. The trends across the pond prompted Cochran and fellow early rock and roll star Gene Vincent to go on tour in the UK. The shows proved so popular that Cochran and Vincent added an additional 10 weeks worth of performances. On April 16, 1960, the duo played a concert in Bristol and hired a cab to drive them to the London airport. The driver lost control on a windy section of highway late at night near Chippenham and hit a lamppost. Vincent suffered a collarbone injury while Cochran was thrown out of the car upon impact. Hours later, he died from the effects of a head injury. He was just 21 years old. According to Rolling Stone, folksy singer-songwriter Jim Croce had given up on music and gotten a job in construction after his early album Jim and Ingrid Croce flopped. Fortunately for music listeners, ABC Dunhill Records gave him a second chance, signing Croce to record a couple of singles. Both songs, You Don't Mess Around With Jim and Operator, reached the top 20 of the pop chart in 1972. The success prompted the recording of a full-length album and led to Croce achieving a number one hit with Bad Bad Leroy Brown in Man. April 1973. Love that. Six months later, Croce was dead. According to the Associated Press, Croce booked a string of concerts at colleges in 1973, and after playing a show at Northwestern Louisiana University, he and his band boarded a small chartered plane to make it to their next show in Sherman, Texas. Unable to reach a safe altitude, the plane crashed right after takeoff, 
striking a tree 250 feet past man, the runway. All these plane Six people crashes, in the vehicle man. died, including Croce's opening act, comedian George Stevens, guitarist Maurice Muleisen, manager Dennis Rast, booking agent Kenneth Dominic Cortese, pilot Robert Newton Elliott, and Croce himself. The singer was just 30 years old. In the late... I see... That's why I hate flying. I hate it. I hate it. And I know people talk about, you know, more car accidents. And Look, man, you up in the air, something goes wrong. That's it. That's it. Ah. 2010s, hers was an indie rock duo on the rise. Everything they were doing was looking great. So there's just a lot of buzz around that band and someone we really believed in. Featured on BBC Introducing, they released their first record, Invitation to Hers, in 2018, which was well received by indie rock fans in the US and the UK. Hers was comprised of Stephen Fitzpatrick and Outen Loading, who met while attending the Liverpool Institute of the Performing Arts. Rock critics enjoyed the band, with The Guardian likening them to The Smiths and Aztec Camera. In 2019, according to CNN, Hers embarked on a 19-day tour across the United States. On March 26, the duo played a show in Phoenix and embarked on the more than 300-mile journey to their next tour date, Santa Ana, California. In the early morning hours of March 27, the group's vehicle was involved in a head-on collision with a pickup truck. The driver of the truck died, as did all three people in the van, while 24-year-old Fitzpatrick Damn. and 25-year-old loading of hers and their tour manager. Rick Nelson was one of the very first rock and roll stars. He was also the prototypical musical teen idol, pruning instant hits each week on The Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet, the long-running sitcom he starred in alongside his family. After a string of hits in the late 1950s like I'm Walking, Poor Little Fool, and Lonesome Town, Nelson had a major comeback hit with the bitter country rock lament Garden Party. They didn't accept him, so he wrote a song that kicked their butts. <laughs> According to the New York Times, following a December 1985 show in Guntersville, Alabama, Nelson and his band took the musician's DC-3 airplane to Dallas, where they were to play a New Year's Eve gig at the Park Suite Hotel. Eyewitnesses saw the plane circling above the northeastern Texas town of DeKalb. Responding to the ominous activities, the Texas Department of Public Safety dispatched a helicopter to assist, and Nelson's pilot reported an onboard fire and that he needed to make an emergency landing. Moments later, the plane, engulfed in flames, careened into a forest and hit a power line on the way down, causing the aircraft to explode upon hitting the trees. The pilot and co-pilot survived, albeit badly burned. Seven passengers all died, including a 45-year-old Nelson, his fiancée, and his band. February 3, 1959 was forever immortalized as the day the music Buddy died, Holly. and for good reason. On that day, a horrible plane crash claimed the lives of the legendary rock and roll pioneers Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, and J.P. Richardson Jr., better known as the Big Bopper. They had just finished playing a show in Iowa as part of their winter dance party tour, a series of shows that was riddled with notoriously poor traveling conditions. According to The Independent, they were faced with a 400-mile journey to their next gig, and no one wanted to make the trip on their freezing, malfunctioning tour bus. Holly decided to charter a private plane, but there were only so many seats. Holly took one, Valens won another on a coin toss, and another musician, Waylon Jennings, gave his seat to Richardson, who was suffering from the flu. For the rest of his life, Jennings would be haunted by the good-natured but, in hindsight, horrible exchange he had with Holly just before the plane took off. Holly jokingly said, I hope your damned bus freezes up again. In response, Jennings quipped, I hope your old plane crashes. Uh... There were no survivors. Combining hard rock, punk, and emo, Bayside helped create and capture the definitive sound of the early 2000s. As all music reports, the band formed in the Bayside neighborhood of Queens, New York in 2000. They quickly released a couple of EPs before signing with Victory Records and putting out their first two full-length albums. In 2005, their self-titled LP became the band's first release to hit the Billboard album chart, not the easiest feat for an alternative band on an indie label. Weeks later, Bayside's tour took them through the American West. While heading to a show in Salt Lake City as a support act for Hawthorne Heights, their van encountered an icy section of highway near Cheyenne, Wyoming. The vehicle flipped and landed on its roof. Bassist Nick Gambarian and drum tech Dan Marino were severely injured, hospitalized Dan Marino. with broken backs and needed surgery. Drummer John Beats Houlihan died as a result of injuries suffered in the accident. He was 31 years old. Ultra smooth, utterly sophisticated soft rock had a big cultural moment in the late 1970s, and few embody that era more than Chuck Mangione. He's one of the few players of the flugelhorn, a brass instrument related to the trumpet, to ever achieve major pop success, according to the Washington Post. 
What's more, he achieved this feat with Feel So Good, a lyrics-free, easy listening jam with a hokey melody played by Mangione himself and accompanied by some funky, disco-adjacent rhythm and bass. It went to number four on the pop chart and was the first of many times Mangione would score on the adult contemporary chart. On the evening of February 12, 2009, according to the CBC, a flight departed from Newark, New Jersey Another in the flight. direction of Buffalo Niagara International Airport in New York. Among the 49 passengers were Gary Nywood and Coleman Mellett, saxophone player and guitarist in Chuck Mangione's backing and touring band. They were scheduled to play with Mangione in the Buffalo Philharmonic, a show that was canceled after the musician's plane crashed into a residence outside Buffalo. According to NPR, all 49 passengers died, including 64-year-old Nywood, who played with Mangione in the 60s and 70s, and 33-year-old Mellett. In the mid-1990s, dance pop duo La Bouche scored a string of hits in Europe and the U.S. with songs like Be My Lover and Sweet Dreams. According to MTV, producer Frank Perry and put the group together, pairing soulful Atlanta-born singer Melanie Thornton with rapper Lane McRae. Following three La Bouche albums, Thornton gave a solo career a try, and even landed a hit in Germany with Ready to Fly. In November 2001, two days before the release of her follow-up single, Wonderful Dream, Thornton died in an aviation accident. The singer was a passenger on a small plane that departed Berlin, Germany, bound for Zurich, Switzerland. Another was scheduled to perform. Damn Just before the plane, plane could safely land, it crashed in a forest near the airport, according to the Associated Press. Thornton was among the 24 people on board who died. The singer was 33. It's just crazy, man, how much, like, you had these people who, had, who hadn't even hit their prime yet. I'm just thinking about the oldest Redding, like the dudes who had to get a permission slip. It's sad. It's extremely sad because I just think about what would they be doing today? You know, oh, I hate flying. I do it because I like going places. I love to travel, but I hate flying. It is what it is. Hey, again, uh, thanks to the Grudge Channel for the video. Didn't know if you guys knew all these details. I know y'all know about a lot of them, but like just the details. But yeah, man, appreciate you guys coming over and watching. Peace out.